Okay, let's start. Good morning at all. Welcome to Milano. Uh, today we talk about uh, type data, which is one of the less documented uh, API in the Drupal 8 uh, uh, core. Uh, it took me some time to understand uh, how it works. I try to ex explain to you today how I learned uh, about this API. I'm Luca. I work for Wellnet, a web agency here in, uh, in Milan. I'm the co-maintainer of some modules, mm, the Drupal 8 version of Devel, the Verdamper, XHProof, Monologue, and some others. I'm a maker. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow today in the afternoon, uh, maybe you will see something I produce uh, for this event. If you want to tweet uh, something, my, this is my account on Twitter. Okay. Um, there is a, a, a big problem with uh, data in Drupal 7. Uh, this is because uh, PHP is a, a very loosely typed language. Okay. A variable. Uh, at one point uh, is a string, then an integer, then a reference to an object, uh, whatever. Uh, basically, uh, PHP doesn't have a clear definition of the different types of data. Okay, so it's difficult for a machine to understand uh, at any point of time uh, which uh, which type of data variable have. Uh, so. Drupal is the same because Drupal uses PHP. Uh, for example, if you have a, a field in Drupal 7, uh, there was not a consistent way to, of, of telling if this field is a string or an integer, a timestamp, or uh, some other kind of data. In Drupal 7 also, you, you cannot tell easily if a field in, a, in an entity, for example, uh, is translatable, or which uh, mm, roles can uh, view, edit, uh, uh, delete uh, the data into the, into the field. So maybe uh, you as a dev developer of the, of the code uh, know the, the value of uh, a text f that the value of a text field uh, is a string. But there is no programmatic way of fetching this information. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, your, your other modules cannot know if uh, a field is a string or an integer or something else. And this exposes us to at least uh, two kinds of problems. Uh, one is validation. Okay, because if you don't know the type of the data, you cannot uh, uh, know how to validate it. Uh, and it's very difficult to build a, a machine-readable uh, API for data access. For example, if you look at the services module code, uh, when, uh, when the module uh, receive uh, uh, a REST uh, call uh, with a node posted, uh, and it has to validate the the node uh, that the field of the of the node for for saving uh, for saving it. You have to uh, pass through the form API uh, of Drupal 7, uh, so it simulate the the same form you use uh, uh, in the backend of Drupal when you create a node. Okay, so every time you uh, want to to save a node in Drupal 7 programmatically, you have to uh, submit something like that to the to the Drupal form API, which is very annoying because uh, the validation of data in Drupal 7 is very uh, coupled with the, the form API. It's very difficult to understand where the validation occurs. Uh, 
in the in the code. And then there is a very weird uh, method to to get validation errors. You you get the last error for the, from the form submission, which is very difficult to to understand. Uh, at the same, for example, if you look at the email module code, there is a hook field validate that uh, validate the, da the data into the into the field to um, check if uh, the the email is, the email is a valid address. Uh, and this validation is. Uh, Scattered through all the all the code, so it, there is not a central point where the the validation uh, is defined and easily discovered by a human and also by a a software. So when the development of Drupal 8 uh, started, uh, one of the the first point was uh, define. Uh, a data structure to represent all data in, uh, in Drupal 8 uh, to allow more consistent validation, uh, uh, static analysis, uh, uh, translate, translatability, accessibility, uh, and so on. Okay. So the type of data was created to provide developers with a consistent way of interacting with data, with data, every, every kind of data in. Uh, in Drupal, in Drupal 8, and is done uh, by providing metadata to the actual uh, value of uh, of data. So, in in the Tape Data API, we have data and metadata about uh, the the data itself, which describe uh, how those data mm, is translated, uh, accessed, uh, defined, stored, and and so on. Okay, so we use the type of data to say if this is a string or an email address, uh, if uh, this, this data has a constraint in a central uh, location, so if this is a string uh, with a max length of uh, 10 characters, or if uh, this string is an email address, uh, a valid email address, uh, we can use it to uh, describe uh, who can access the data, read, uh, write, or delete, if the data is translatable, and other, other things. OK, I don't know if you see this image, but no worry, because this is the class di partial class diagram of the type of data in Drupal 8. It's quite complex uh, to understand. But, uh, Type data mainly provides three different interfaces in terms of object oriented programming. Uh, these three different interfaces are used for uh, describing uh, type of, uh, of data in your, in your application. The first one is complex data interface and is used for data. This is composite of name properties with more pieces of data. For example, uh, uh, if you have a um, an email field in, uh, in Drupal 8, the email field has, a, a, for example, a, ti a title, a URL, uh, or for instance, a, an image have a relation with the file, with the, with the image, a title, an alternative text, uh, dimensions, uh, and so on. Uh, this is represented uses instances of complex data interface. Then we have a, a list interface that are used for something that is composite of a sequential list of other things. Uh, for instance, a list of our other complex pieces of data. For example, every we will see that later in the presentation, but every field uh, attached to an entity in Drupal 8 is a list of something. It is, it is defined with the a list, inter list interface uh, instance. And then we have a type of data interface which represents uh, a primitive value. For instance, a string or an integer or something like that. And it is the smallest building block of the type of data API. So we have uh, 
type the instances of type data interface, grouped into a list of, uh, sorry, grouped in a, some complex uh, type of data, and uh, put together in a list of something. Okay. Why this is important to understand how Drupal 8 works? Because type of data, uh, no, sorry, this is later. Uh, in Drupal 8, type of data interface, so the various kind of type of data type you can use in your code is implemented as Drupal 8 plugins. So you can uh, use the plugin defined in the core, or you can extend uh, which kind of data you can describe in your application, uh, providing one Drupal 8 uh, plugin. You can use the data type annotation, we will see later how to do this, uh, to describe uh, a new type of data. The core provides this uh, type, uh, type of data. Uh, for example, we have uh, integer, list, uh, string, map for uh, complex data, uh, float, email, uh, timestamp, and so on. You can add uh, yours to, the, to this list. Is readable uh, also for the back? Okay, for example, the string data type in Drupal 8 is defined, you use this class called string data, and because it is a plugin in, uh, in Drupal 8 uh, world, uh, it has a annotation, data type, the ID is a string, and it has a, at minimum a, a label, which is the human, human uh, readable uh, uh, label for this, uh, for this data type. And for example, string data extend primitive base because it's one of the uh, primitive uh, value. Okay. Okay, now the things uh, become difficult. Okay, type of data interface, the implementation of the type of data interface as the string data uh, we saw in the previous slide, stores the, da the data. We say at the uh, start of the presentation that we have data and metada metadata. Uh, metadata are stored in another subset of class, classes that implements another interface which is called data definition interface. Data definition interface uh, stores uh, uh, information about uh, constraint, uh, description, uh, type, uh, about uh, this, uh, this, specific, uh, this specific data. And you can derive the data definition from the data type and vice versa. So from the data type, type of data interface, you can get data definition. From the data definition interface, you can get the data type. OK. The usual uh, class for data definition is uh, data definition. And it has uh, this, those, um, those methods with, with other less in interesting. Uh, so we can use those uh, classes to get uh, constraints about data, description, label, settings, uh, and to understand if this data is computed, so it's derived from other, uh, from other uh, data, if it is a list, if it is read-only, is required, and, and so on. Okay, so that we have uh, talk about uh, theory, we can go through some examples to understand how to use uh, all those things. Okay, for example, you want to create uh, a string data to store some string information. So we use uh, this static method of the data definition class called create, and we uh, put the um, plugin ID of the data type we want to, to use. If you remember the, um, the string data type as an ID of string, so we can use this plugin ID to tell Drupal to create a data definition that wraps the metadata of a typical string uh, value. 
And then we can use uh, the Taper Data Manager service in Drupal 8. Okay, don't do that in your code. Dependence inject uh, uh, services into other classes. This is for simplicity. Uh, so you uh, get the Taper Data Manager from the service container of Drupal 8 and then create a new instance of the real data at this point which use this definition, let's say this is a string, and the actual value of the string we want to store. For example, we have created a, uh, a type of data of kind uh, string that stores a, a string called my string. Some repetition, but... Okay. If you want to create a list of data, okay, using list uh, uh, data, data type, data interface, we can use another static method of a different class, uh, which is list uh, data definition, that is a subclass of the data definition we saw in the previous slide, to create a list of data of type string. So we have a list of, of type of data, every item of this list is a string. Okay. In the same way, we, we create a definition and then we use the type of data manager service to create the real data using that definition and an array, for example, of, uh, of strings. More complex, we can create a complex data, which is a data that stores uh, different uh, properties uh, which are uh, every, with, in which every property has a, um, um, a title, uh, a label, and the real data. So we use uh, uh, the data definition to create a string and a URI. Okay, so we have uh, a title and well, URL, okay, it's the same. The one, uh, the, the title data has a link title as real value. The URL data is Drupal.org as real value. And then we create a map data definition. Okay. We call it link. And then we use the type of data manager to create uh, the representation of the map data definition. And on this representation, we set the title as title data and the URL as URL data. At this point, we have a complex uh, data type that has, that has uh, two properties, one called title and one called URL. We can access those, informations, uh, those information uh, directly from the link data type. OK. Now we know how to create data type. One interesting uh, point about uh, this is that data definition can have constraints. So when we define our data definition, for example, a string or email and so on, we can attach constraints to those definitions uh, to limit the data they can accept. For example, okay, uh, also constraints in Drupal 8 are plugins. So the core provides us uh, a list of uh, already defined uh, uh, and ready to use uh, plugins that use the at constraint uh, annotation. Uh, we can provide uh, some other constraint uh, for our application. And the constraint, constraint uh, are directly built on the Symfony validation, uh, validator component. So we directly use uh, uh, that component from, from Symfony. We didn't invent anything new. For example, we can take the example uh, of, the, of the simple uh, string. So we create uh, a data definition which wraps a uh, data type uh, of, uh, of kind of string. And then we have a constraint. For example, we say that uh, this string cannot uh, be uh, less than uh, five uh, characters. 
So the, sorry, cannot be more than uh, uh, five characters. So we say that the, we use the length uh, plugin, which, which has uh, some configuration, in this case, the min, ma min max uh, uh, properties, to say that the data allowed in this definition can only accept uh, at maximum five uh, characters. And then we create the real data uh, using the data definition. At this point, Drupal doesn't do any validation. Okay, this is uh, this pass without uh, without any problem. Uh, we have to explicitly try to validate uh, this uh, this data to understand if the actual data is uh, is valid. Those are the uh, constraints already defined in the Drupal 8 uh, core. So we have, for example. Uh, Email, uh, length, uh, username unique uh, that controls you can, cannot create two users with the same uh, username, uh, file validation, uh, uh, and so on. Okay. And so, uh, to validate if the data is valid, uh, you can use the validate method on the type of data object and uh, the, the return of this method is an instance of a constraint violation list directly from the Symfony validator component so you can iterate through this list to, to show if something goes uh, wrong and to understand why your data is not, uh, is not valid. Okay, for, exam for example uh, in this case, uh, uh, we say that uh, the max length of the string has to be five. My string is more than five characters. So I have one uh, violation. Uh, and I get uh, the message, which uh, tells me why my data is not valid. For example, this value is too long, uh, etc. And the data I, I, I use so by my string for, for, for the value, 5 for the limit. And I can use this information to provide feedback to the user, for example, to, to show why the data is not, uh, is not valid. Okay. Why this is uh, so important in the Drupal 8 core, this uh, uh, type of data API, because all the entity API that we use every, every day, uh, so entity fields uh, and so on, is built on the type of data API. Okay, every, every piece, of infor piece of information that you put into your Drupal 8 uh, site using uh, entity and fields is stored, is uh, represented, sorry, using type data API. The entity API adds uh, the, the storage uh, facility to store that, that, that data, for example, to a, to a database. Okay, so you remember we have a complex uh, data interface, a list data interface, a type of data interface, an entity is a complex piece of data because it's composed of, composed of other pieces of data. Okay, we have fields in, uh, in entity. Every entity uh, has a list of, uh, of fields. Okay, so entities are complex, are complex kind of data. And in effect, entity is an instance, instance of complex data interface. Not really the entity of, mm, class itself, because uh, uh, Drupal 8 has an entity adapter to wraps, that wraps the uh, entity object to provide uh, a bridge with the type of data API. Every property of an entity which is the list of uh, fields uh, and so on, uh, 
is not complex. It's just a list of items. Okay? So every, every, fi every field in an entity is a, a list, uh, list data type. For example, if you get the image field from a, a content type, for example, uh, this is an instance of list interface, just a list of items. The items are complex because, for example, uh, an image field can have uh, some attributes like uh, title, alternative text, uh, dimension, uh, file, and so on. So, the, for example, the, the first element of a list of image uh, field is complex. Okay. And then the, uh, the values of those items uh, are primitive. So, for example, the alt attribute of the first element of the image field of a content type uh, is, uh, in this case, maybe a string, data type. So, it's uh, uh, the, 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 the simplest uh, information we can, uh, we can store. Okay. For example, we can we if we can uh, get all um, all fields and their data definition from an entity, we can use this method, uh, which is get field definitions, and it returns a list of every data definition for every um, fields we have uh, attached to a to an entity. The big difference between uh, Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 is that in Drupal 7 uh, some properties of an entity are fields. Some other uh, are basic property, for example, uh, the, the author, uh, the create uh, timestamp, update timestamp in Drupal 7 are not fields, are directly property of, the, of an entity, of the mm, node entity. In Drupal 8, Everything is a field. The author is a field. Uh, the create uh, timestamp is a is a field. They derive from. Uh, they use two different uh, interfaces, but derive from a unique uh, parent. Okay. For example, to get an array uh, with all uh, for all properties and their definition from an uh, image, uh, image field, we can get uh, the image field from the entity, then the field definition from, from the field, and then the proper definition of the single attribute, that uh, single properties that define uh, an image, for example, so alternative text, uh, title, uh, and so on. For example, if we want uh, only the definition of the alt, uh, property of an image field, we can say entity, image, get field definition, get property definition, alt, for example, and we get the data definition of the alt property of an image field. Okay. Entity API adds two plugin instances to, to type it data. One is for uh, the entity itself. So, uh, we have a plugin for every kind of entity in, uh, defined in, uh, in our website. This is done with uh, the usual uh, data type annotation uh, that have uh, a driver, which is a kind of plugin producer, in, uh, dynamic producer in Drupal 8 to define uh, dynamic, uh, dynamic plugins. And so we have uh, uh, a lot more data type uh, plugin uh, in, uh, in our websites, one for every uh, entity, uh, one for every entity type, and if the entity type has uh, bundles, one for every bundles of that entity type. And the same 
for uh, for fields. So we have this uh, this plugin field item that adds uh, some other uh, uh, plugins data type plugins to our websites. One for every uh, field we have defined on our on our site. Okay. So to better understand uh, how this works, I wrote a, a simple uh, module uh, called uh, Type Data Explorer. Uh, it's very simple. I, I think it has a lot of bugs, but it works. Uh, it's based on Web Profiler for uh, class uh, class linking, and if you want to to try it on, you can download it from GitHub. I don't know if you ever go to the Drupal.org. Oh, sorry. So if you install it in your uh, Drupal 8 uh, module, you you have uh, under the reports uh, menu. You have this uh, type of data explorer, and uh, on the first tab, we see all the type of data plugins uh, uh, that uh, we can use on uh, on our site. So we we saw the, the same list as uh, as before. For example, the entity, every every entity, every entity type, every field uh, item, and then. Uh, every standard plugin such as integer email and so on for every for every pl plugin we have uh, the class that define the data type so the class that stores the the information and the data definition class the class that stores the metadata about uh, this uh, this data so for example String is defined in a class called string data. We saw this uh, in a slide pre in a previous slide, uh, which is in uh, Drupal core type data plugin uh, data type uh, string data, uh, and is defined with uh, this class, which is in core Drupal core type data data definition. If you have configured the web profiler and click on, uh, oops, on the link, uh, you go to the configured editor, for instance, PHPStorm, and we can see that uh, the string plugin is defined in, in this class, string data, which extends primitive base which have the two main uh, method, which is a set value, a get value, because type of data is the component of the type of data API that stores the, da that stores the data. So we can use this class to access, both in read and write, uh, the, actual, uh, the actual data. At the same time, the data definition class define method uh, about the metadata. So we can, we can use this class to get the label. We can assign a label uh, of a data, description, uh, if it's this a list, is read-only, and so on. Settings, uh, constraints, uh, etc. And then we can click on the ex explore link on the right. OK. Oops. That print us uh, uh, some other uh, useful information. <clears throat> For example, the plugin provider is the core. Class is string data. List definition class is list data definition. List class is 
an item list, the definition class is the data definition. One interesting point is that uh, this, the, um, the data type uh, of kind string uh, is unwrapped for canonical representation, which means that uh, uh, the object itself that stores the string is a typed data object. Uh, we saw, we, we see later that uh, an, an entity uh, it needs to be wrapped with an entity adapter to comply with the typed data API. Okay, oops. Okay, then we have uh, a list of constraints, so we can uh, we can see uh, all the all the constraints defined on uh, this website. For example, the length length constraint we we saw earlier which is Drupal core validation, uh, plugin validation constraint, uh, land constraint, which is defined in this class with the constraint uh, uh, annotation. It is a constraint of data type of kind string, so we can uh, use to uh, validate uh, strings with this uh, constraint. We have the message for the max, mean, or exact, uh, validation and this validated by the length validator constraint of a symphony validator component so those validation are those constraints are the one defined by the by the core but you can add uh, every constraints you want to to check, uh, to check your data. Constraints uh, that uh, you can uh, attach to field, uh, field definition. So for example, if you have an entity, and in this entity you have a field uh, with some strange requirements for uh, data validation, you can define an, a new constraint uh, plugin, and with, uh, I think, uh, hook entity data type alter something like that you can attach this uh, constraint to to your fields and uh, drupal use it to when when it validates uh, uh, your entity and then for example we can uh, see uh, i think uh, five no <laughs> You can use this interface to <coughs> to ask the module to show you the the data that uh, compose uh, an entity. For example, this is a node, uh, and we can see that uh, all the all the properties of this node is represented as uh, some kind of data type. Uh, for example, we have uh, uh, then node ID, which is an integer, the unique uh, identifier, which is a unique identifier data type, version ID is an integer, lang code is a data type of kind language, and at this, uh, in the same uh, in the same list, we we have fields. So. Uh, in Drupal 8, uh, both uh, uh, basic properties like uh, node ID, create at a timestamp, uh, change at a timestamp, and uh, fields are on the same uh, uh, are the same are the same type of uh, of data derived from uh, data type. And for example, we can see that the field, the field image, which is a list of item of kind uh, image, uh, 
uh, is a complex data type, okay? A single, a single item of a list for a, for a field is, uh, is complex. And for instance, this is a, an image uh, data type because the data type plugin is field item image. And it has uh, different properties, uh, which at this point are uh, primitive. So they are simple. We have uh, height, uh, which is an integer, width, which is an integer, title, which is a string, alt is a string. Entity is, a, is an entity reference to the, to the file entity, which stores uh, the, the actual uh, image. And target ID is the ID of the file entity that stores uh, the, the image. For example, uh, the tag The tag, uh, the tag data, data type, which is uh, an entity reference in Drupal 8, uh, only uh, has two properties. One for the entity, which is term, and one for the target ID, which is the ID of the term that we uh, reference. Okay, so we can use this, uh, this simple module to uh, understand uh, uh, which plugin, uh, which data type of data plugin we can use, which constraints uh, uh, we can uh, we can use, and uh, we can explore how our um, our entities uh, are composed on uh, on this uh, on this website. Okay. Uh, here we have a list of uh, resources where you can. Uh, uh, read to discover not so much because uh, there is uh, four, four pages on, e on the whole internet which talk about type of data. Uh, two is uh, on the Drupal.org uh, documentation and uh, there is uh, two articles on SitePoint, SitePoint.com uh, so you can the in, um, in, this, uh, in those uh, articles on uh, SitePoint, there are a lot of examples you can uh, understand how to uh, further uh, use uh, type data API. If you want to look at a real implementation, there is this uh, module on Drupal 8, uh, which is very interesting because uh, it uh, it was developed for uh, communicate with the uh, Xero application, which is a um, SaaS service for, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, accounting. Uh, I don't know the, 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 the specific uh, use case, because the, the, the interesting uh, thing is that uh, the developer of this module uh, wrote a um, Type data representation of the remote uh, data exposed by by those API, and then use uh, web services to populate uh, the Drupal 8 uh, representation of those uh, type of data. And because uh, all Drupal is based on uh, on those uh, type of data, uh, he can use uh, views uh, and so on for navigate through uh, the information without storing them as an entity in, uh, in Drupal 8. So it's everything on, on the fly. So it's very, it's very interesting to, to understand how he provides uh, this functionality. Another interesting module that uses uh, type data a lot is the GraphQL uh, module. There is a workshop uh, about, no, there is no more workshop. Uh, a ah, short workshop about uh, GraphQL tomorrow or Saturday. Saturday? Okay. Uh, GraphQL uh, is a um, uh, representation is used to represent a query your via web services uh, your data uh, data in a Drupal 8 uh, installation. 
So it's a um, it, it used the type data API to discover how the data is uh, represented in uh, in your Drupal 8, and this is uh, the the big problem that we have in uh, in Drupal 7. We cannot do that in in a simple way in uh, in Drupal 7 because there is not a formal uh, uh, definition of uh, of data. In Drupal 8, we can have uh, we have this uh, this kind of uh, of metadata, so we can build uh, uh, automatic uh, <coughs> uh, machine discovery API to, to understand how data is uh, represented in, uh, in our website. Okay. Just one more slide. So, uh, we as WellNet uh, have a website It's called Test Your Drupal Skills on the internet. You can uh, go there and uh, test uh, uh, your, your skills uh, on, uh, on Drupal. For this uh, event, uh, we rename it uh, Test Your Drupal Spritz. Spritz is uh, the most famous uh, drink in, uh, in Northern Italy. Uh, so starting from tomorrow, uh, today in the afternoon, Uh, at the sprints, uh, sprints area, you can go uh, do a test, and if you if you want the test, uh, you get a spritz directly served from a Arduino-based machine. So, uh, <laughs> so it's very it's very interesting. To you, you can uh, you can book your test with a tweet with the hashtag. Uh, Uh, TYDS, thanks. Uh, so, if you want to try participate and and win, uh, write what you want uh, with this with that uh, hashtag. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, if someone uh, has uh, questions. If you, if you want, I'm here uh, both uh, today, tomorrow, Friday, so feel free to, to ask questions when, uh, when you want, if you don't have any questions now. Okay, the question uh, was uh, uh, what uh, use case, which use cases uh, uh, we as developers uh, have when uh, that involves uh, using uh, type of data. Uh, for example, for validation, if you, if you need to define uh, new constraints to, to, validate, uh, to validate specific data, uh, I mean, for example, uh, if you have some geographic data, you have uh, some particular constraints uh, to, to define, uh, for example, the bound of the uh, region or something like that. Uh, and if you, if you build, for example, uh, um, if you need to represent in Drupal remote, uh, remote data that you don't want to store into directly into entity, for example, So we have remote, uh, you don't want remote entities, you just want uh, to represent uh, something remote into, into, into Drupal. For example, something described with uh, web services uh, somewhere else. And for, I, I didn't talk a lot about that, and for uh, uh, translation and access. So you can define uh, which user can uh, access, read, write, delete uh, a singular uh, pieces uh, of the type of data information. Okay, so we can say a big uh, thanks to all of our sponsors uh, that uh, made this uh, event possible. And thank you again.